Environmental injustice and racism can look like many things. It can be toxic petrochemical plants in Louisiana's Cancer Alley or lead in Flint, Michigan's water. Perhaps the raw sewage backing up into homes in Illinois. Or a small, predominantly black area of Alabama called Shiloh, repeatedly plagued by flooding, which residents say is due to the construction of a nearby highway. The issue is impacting residents whose families have lived there for generations and who say that they now find themselves in difficult conditions. They say it's the direct result of the state inflicting what on its face looks like what other communities have experienced over decades, environmental injustice. In tonight's Prime Focus, Steve Osinsami brings you the story of those residents as they call out for help. Rain will be ending from north to south. You just can't see much. I mean, it's so frustrating. You've got these big storms in the middle of the night. You just can't see much at all. Anytime there's any rain in the weather forecast for southern Alabama. These are flood advisories in effect. They don't sleep well at night along this small section of U.S. Highway 84. This started after we had the road put in. It took time for them to build up the road, and as they built up, then more water came down. That's bad. You let a storm come less than one hour, that place is saturated with water. The family of Timothy Williams and many of the other black Americans here have owned their slice of heaven near the Florida-Georgia line for more than 150 years. We pray that you'll bless the food, take out any offense, and that it be good for the nation of our body. In your name we pray, amen. amen. They are rare people in America, a couple dozen black landowners who've been able to pass down a small piece of generational wealth to their children. They live in a historic rural community, several hundred acres large, just east of the city of Elba, a place they call Shiloh, a name that comes from the Hebrew Bible. And when the floodgates of the sky break open, like it says in the scriptures, they say it threatens all they have. All right, we're going to see how the water's rolling down from the highway, the uh, state highway. We saw for ourselves how only 15 minutes of heavy rain was enough to bring inches of water right up to their doorsteps on their small stretch of the highway where everyone is African-American. They say that the water brings frogs and poisonous snakes like they've never seen here before. Fighting the water is expensive. Their inheritance is drowning. They put us in a hole. We were never in, in a hole situation. But they took the highway and they elevated it and then forced all the water onto us. That's, I mean, I mean, that's just plain Jane, as I say, you know, what they did. Is this what you might call environmental racism? Yes, sir. For the good people of Alabama, the new miles of concrete were supposed to be a blessing. But here in Shiloh, they say that replacing their old dirt road has felt more like a curse. US 84 was first built in 1926, and back then it only stretched from Georgia to Alabama. Today, it runs as far west as New Mexico, and the last pieces of construction were these new lanes running 100 miles that passed through southern Alabama and opened for traffic here over the last several years. But even before the road crews in Alabama had finished their work, our investigation found electronic diaries, sometimes weekly notes from state employees, showing that they were already getting complaints from the families in Shiloh along a half-mile stretch of the freeway. And they were telling them that the runoff from the new road was flooding them out. Willie Horstead, an Army veteran, was one of the landowners who tried to get them to listen. I feel like why they're not concerned because the shoe is not on their foot, it's on mine. My home was born being destroyed, not there. Otis Andrews, a grandfather, says that the regular flooding is shifting his home's foundation and putting cracks in his walls. And that one over the door, that, that's one right there. And that one right there too, see? They all admit that the state made the early designs of the new highway readily available, but say it was hard to see at the time how these large drains on paper would look like this in real life. 
in some cases pointing the runoff from the highway directly at their houses. And they say they couldn't have known that this large retention pond so close to their homes that was meant to hold the water would regularly overflow. They're now begging for help from investigators at the Federal Highway Administration who answered their calls and are seen here coming out to look for themselves last winter. They went back to Washington and opened a civil rights investigation. A lot of this property here are Caucasian people, which is white people on these properties. The state fixed it where their properties wouldn't flood. But when it only got to the shallow community, they flooded us. From the sky, it's easy to see what he means, how all the drains on this stretch of the freeway empty out near homes in Shiloh. We talked with county officials who believe this is what happened. They say the state was trying to protect the highway from a major flood, putting Shiloh in a bowl. They had to raise it almost 16 feet of what they were planning because we had a flooding event just before they're building or as they're building the highway in 2015. Now they're in a bowl because you got a 18-foot uh, highway over here, and they're down here. You guys never used to flood? Never, never. Not ever? Ever. I, as a little boy coming to that community, my grandmother lived there. I used to farm out there with her, the gardens and everything. You feel they're trying to push you out? I mean, it's no doubt. This is racism. There's no other way around it. And then they don't even want to correct the problem, you know? We've asked them to correct it. No, you can't do it. You just got to live with it. We've been working closely with the data team at our ABC-owned television stations who found that the Williams family property, which includes this restaurant, should normally only have a 4% chance of flooding at least once a year. Our home is going to be sunk uh, because the waters from here is already sinking the house. But Williams says that since the new highway, his home seems to flood practically every time it rains. And according to the weather data, the area has seen heavy rains more than 150 times since March of 2019. Why is it hard for folks on the black side of the street? Because we're losing, excuse me. Whew. We're, we're, we're losing everything. Whew. Every time I talk about it, taking our savings and, and um, to fix everything, and we don't have any more money. Whew. And um, this wasn't the plan, you know? Um, I don't know what else to do, you know? Our inheritance is is just being washed away. And it's not just black families in Alabama. Federal highway officials have looked into similar complaints from Native American, Hispanic, and other communities of color in several other states. So this is your hometown? Uh, yeah, I was born in Elba. In Alabama, they're getting help from a hometown hero. From here? Professor Robert Bullard helped coin the phrase environmental racism in the 18 books he's written over the last 40 years. And he's helping them fight something that we uncovered in this investigation. These are agreements signed three years ago between the state and the homeowners that Dr. Bullard says are highway robbery because the payments are small. Some of the families were afraid to talk to us because of these documents, worried the state would ask for the money back. But as we have discovered, these settlements don't even require the state to do anything about the flooding. Settlements should mean that you have resolved something. The flooding is not resolved. Three of the neighbors who say they needed the money to fix their homes signed this, what's called a restrictive covenant and agreement, and no one was paid more than $5,000. They agreed to forever discharge any and all claims against the state of Alabama and agreed that both the current and future owners can no longer take action against the state, no matter how much worse the flooding gets. In a statement to ABC News, the Alabama Department of Transportation says that we do not believe any unfair treatment has occurred regarding the Shiloh community and certainly no discrimination against anyone. And they say they put the restrictive covenants in each of the deals 
because the state maintains that it has not increased the volume of stormwater runoff being placed on the Shiloh community. But they also tell us that they just hired a consultant to look into improving the way the drains move the water. Is there any doubt in your mind that uh -huh. if you were a white landowner, uh -huh. that you would be getting more cooperation, more results, different treatment? Oh, yes. They would have came quick like they did the daycare. Rhonda Robinson and her mother, Peggy Carpenter, say that the settlements the black family signed are too low, and they would know. They own this daycare a few miles west of Shiloh on this same stretch of the new highway that also started flooding. The loss of their family business broke their hearts. But in their case, the state gave them $165,000, buying a portion of the land two and a half years ago. Like the black families down the road, they too can no longer file future claims against the state. Hmm. I can't imagine. I feel for them because the fight was hard. That's like a drop, a penny in a bucket. I'm still bored over that. That's just heartbreaking. I'm sorry. This, this happens quite frequently, where the government can uh, take advantage of, of underserved populations or unsophisticated parties. Blake Hudson is a dean and a property law professor at Sanford University outside Birmingham and says he can relate to the struggles of Shiloh. He got into law after the state built a new highway and took a portion of his family's farm, but paid his grandfather less than their neighbors. I have a feeling if the government had come to these people and said, this water will go into your house, they wouldn't have taken the $4,800. County officials we met are now trying to find money to help the state redirect the water. And they say something needs to be done soon because it's raining more and raining more often. The landowners in Shiloh say that despite it all, they want to hold on to what's theirs. It's black land. Right. And that's something. Yes, sir. We're never going to walk away. We're going to continue to fight. And I do believe somebody's going to hear us. Continuing to fight for their land and their people, our thanks to Steve Osinsami for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.